What's going on guys? In my last video I went over the top 10 tips and tricks for animation throwdown, and in this video I'll be going over in detail how to build a good deck for each game mode. As I mentioned in my last couple of videos, this is going to be my last animation throwdown video, so keep watching until the end of the video for a special surprise. Alright, let's get into it. But before we get started, if you haven't already seen my complete guide to all of the card skills in the game, I highly suggest checking that out first, as it will explain a lot of the terminology I'm going to use, and having a strong knowledge of how all of the skills work and interact with each other will instantly improve your game a hundredfold anyways. The link will be down in the video description. Alright, so without further ado, let's get into it. First up, I'm going to be going over my three universal rules when it comes to deck building that I always follow. The first rule is to always keep your card count down to the minimum number of cards of 25. This increases the odds that you'll draw the cards you need to make the combos you need sooner. The second rule is to maintain maximum synergy between your different types of cards. What I mean by that is you're going to want to have an even number of items and character cards with the ideal ratio of them being 1 to 1. This will ensure that you're able to make your combos as often as possible and it makes it less likely that statistically that you'll be stuck in a situation where you'll only have one type of card in your hand that'll prevent you from making combos. You also will want to make sure that your items and characters all combo with each other with as few holes as possible. Ideally there should never be less than a 75% chance of being able to make a combo with any card in your deck. Which leads me into rule number three, research all of your combos. Combos are what win games. If your combos aren't researched, you can't play them. And that goes for defense as well as offense. Those are my three universal rules that I always follow when it comes to deck building. Next, I'm going to be giving you a couple of resources available to you that streamline the deck building process and make building a deck super easy. The first one is a tool called Zbot. This is a deck building tool that also has functions for guild event planning and statistical reporting. To have access to this tool, you need to download the Line Chat app in order to use it, you need to become a registered user or be in a guild who has a member that is already a registered user. If you don't want to become a registered member yourself but still want to use this tool, as long as one of your guildmates is a registered member, all you have to do is send Zbot a message saying add me and it will respond with an add code. Simply provide that code to your registered guildmate and they can add you as a user under them. If you do this method, keep in mind that the bot will only work so long as both of you remain in the same guild. So if either of you leave, the bot will stop working for the non-registered user. I'll have a link to the instructions for how to register in the video description. There are several functions built into this tool, enough that could cover its own video, so I'm only going to be going over the ones pertinent to deck building. I highly encourage you to mess around with all of the features on your own though to really learn the ins and outs of it as it has a lot of potential to help elevate your guild strategy and guild events as well. For a full list of commands, just type commands and it will respond with a picture of them all. The first useful command for deck building that we're going to look at is combo maps. You can look at the map of what cards combo together for any given show or trait, which is very useful for figuring out what cards work with each other for any given BGE or for show islands in Siege. To bring this up, simply type the command CC and the trait or show that you want to see. It's hands down one of the most useful tools on here. You can also look up the combo charts for a particular combo if you want to know every possible combination to make that combo. The command for that is CC and the combo name. You can also see the exact stats that a particular combo will have at every level of combo mastery when made with maxed out cards. The command is the same as the individual combo one with CM added at the end. Once you have your deck built, there's a few other commands that you will want to take advantage of to make sure your deck is optimized for maximum efficiency. The first command is Analyze. This gives you a breakdown of your currently selected in-game deck in text, as well as a picture of all of the cards in your selected deck and all of the combos and variants of said combos that can be made with it. You can also get the combo map for your currently selected deck to see how well the synergy between your cards is. You can get a simplified map with the command CMAP, and a full map with fmap. This is probably the most useful tool when it comes to building your deck to ensure it's optimized to its best potential. And the final command that we're going to cover is the stat command. This command gives you a statistical analysis of your deck from drawing 10,000 5 card hands which gives you a keen insight on what you can realistically expect as far as potential opening hands will be and what combos you can make the most turn one from a statistical standpoint. That's the bare bones basics of deck building with Zbot. The other deck building tool out there is old school and it's a bit more tedious, but it's how everyone used to go about deck building before Zbot. And that's the Animation Throwdown Knowledge Base. 
This is a fan-made site that has a lot of strategy information and deck building tools. Similar to Zbot, you can look up combo recipes for a specific combo. Simply choose what combo you want to look up, select what level you want to see the stats for the combo of, and optionally filter for ingredient card rarity and or skills, and you're good to go. It will bring you up every recipe for that combo. Alternatively, if you're curious about what the exact stats of a combo would be with your exact cards, you can do a detailed combo recipe lookup. Simply choose what two cards you want to look up for the combo, what level you have them at, set them, and voila! While not as in detail as Zbot, there is also a way for you to analyze and check the synergy of your completed deck to an extent. Using the Share Your Deck tool, simply add each of your cards and their levels in one by one, and once you have them all plugged in, It'll give you a breakdown of your character, item, and pre-combo ratio, as well as what combos you can make with this deck. Also, if any of your cards have less than a 75% chance of making a combo, it will let you know. Ideally, no card should show up as less than 75% in an optimized deck. If any cards do show up there, you might want to reconsider them and replace them if you're able to. I'll have the link for the site down in the video description. And that's going to do it for the tools and resources available to you to make the deck building process a bit more easier and organized. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of individual game modes and how to build the best decks for them. First up, we're going to be covering how to build a Rumble Offense deck. The first major tip that I have is to play to the BGE as best you can. More specifically, play to the offensive BGE. Typically, if there are two BGEs running simultaneously, one is usually suited for offense, while the other is more defensive to counter it. Obviously, if there's only one BGE, then play to the active one as best you can. The best strategy for Rumble is to try and one-shot your opponent's cards so that they can't get any on the field, ensuring you take no damage and get a perfect 100 score each match. There is one particular skill that is perfect for accomplishing this, and that is the punch skill. If you can create a deck full of a bunch of combos with high attack and a high punch value, you have a very good chance of one-shotting your opponent's cards into dust. This is especially beneficial if the combo with punch also matches a BGE that grants additional punch. Now I know an OP slaughterhouse deck full of punchers isn't something every player can put together, and sometimes that strategy won't cut it based on the defensive BGE or even the strength of your opponents. When you can't ensure the complete and utter annihilation of your opponents with one-shots every time, you'll want to focus on some other supportive skills. Since your score is dependent on your card health at match end, utilizing cards and combos with the heal and heal all skills are a must to help support your card wall and keep them all topped off in the HP department. Another way you can heal on up is by utilizing cards and combos with the leech skill to make them self healers. You can also utilize cards and combos with the recover skill to increase your total pool of card HP to help increase your score as well. When it comes to minimizing damage you take, some great skills are the cripple and cripple all ones. Get a chain of those combos on the field and you can reduce your opponent's attack to zero each turn and avoid all damage. You can also leverage cards with the jab skill to help break through more defensive cards and combos your opponents might be running. When it comes to more support skills, some good ones to run on your pre-combo cards are skills like Sturdy and Bodyguard, as pre-combo should primarily be used as buffer support cards and health expansion slots in Rumble Offense. In that regard, you want to run high HP cards for the pre-combos because of that. You can also run cards with Craze and Motivate, but those are a bit of a double-edged sword for Rumble and can be pretty risky. When it comes to your items, since you're in full control of your cards and you get to go first, it's best to run item cards with high attack. The higher the attack of the item used to make the combo, the stronger the combo will be. Character-wise, you'll want to research what characters and what items make the best combos that match the criteria we just talked about for the current BGE. If you can't make those particular combos, see what you can make with your cards that does. Also, when it comes to what combos to run, honestly, a boring deck is the best deck. It's sad but true. Some of the most effective decks out there don't rely on a bunch of various combos, but instead focus on one or two of the same exact powerful combos. When it comes to the card spread for an offensive deck for Rumble, there are a couple schools of thought, but in my experience, the absolute best ratio to run is 10-10-5, meaning 10 items, 10 characters, and 5 pre-combos. Or if you can't make that, I found 11-11-3 works pretty well too. Either of those maximize your chances of being able to make a combo when you need to, while still maintaining some balance with room for pre-combo buffers. Here's an example I made of a Rumble Offense deck that I might run for a drunk BGE. As you can see, I'm running 25 cards total with a 10-10-5 spread. You'll notice two of my pre-combos, Viking Peter, play to the drunk theme if a drunk BGE were active. 
On top of that, it has relatively high HP, especially since I have level 2 combo mastery for it, as well as having the desired skills of Punch and Bodyguard. You'll notice my other three pre-combos though aren't drunk ones. Brian's Statue and Meat Man are both ones I also have combo mastery for and they both have insanely high HP as well as Bodyguard, making them excellent buffers and health pool expanders. Meat Man also acts as a healer for me. Now you'll notice I'm running a mix of a small handful of mythic cards and the rest maxed out legendaries, with all of the items being drunk. This is just an example of an ideal deck for higher level. What I want you to focus on are the combos that I make with these, the skills that they have, and how they flow together. First off, you'll notice that this deck isn't 100% synergistic between all cards. Luis doesn't combo with two of my item cards. This was a calculated risk as her combo has great one-shot potential, as well as having the desired skill for Cripple All to mitigate damage. If you look at the rest of the cards, they all combo perfectly with each other, with almost all of them making combos with a lot of punch value to help try and score those one-shots in slot 1. Notice how I prioritize Bender as the only non-mythic character as more than half his potential combos have the punch skill as well as doubling as a healer for my other cards should I take damage. He also has the bonus of being a self-healer with Leech. Leela is in the deck for the same reason. My goal would be to make her Oktoberfest combo for the heal all and Leech. Even if I miss those combos though, her other ones can be just as supportive and devastating. What you'll notice is the common thread with all of the other combos. Even if I miss my main target combos, the rest all have ideal supportive skills like Cripple, Bodyguard, and Sturdy to assist me in defending until I can make the combos I'm looking for. It's this kind of flow that you ideally want to create with your own decks. Now, let's talk about what heroes are best to run for an offense deck in Rumble. Out of the free-to-play heroes, Tina is the best one to run for Rumble offense in my opinion, as she offers the most beneficial skills in support of score, as she both heals one of your cards and cripples all of your opponent's cards every turn. Behind her at a close second is Bobby. Bobby both protects your cards a little bit each turn by shielding one of them, as well as crippling one of your opponents, while also increasing your chance at one-shotting cards by punching one of your opponent's cards each turn as well. As for the premium heroes, you have quite a few more options. The best premium options for offense are between Consuela, Ricky Spanish, John Redcorn, and Zap Brannigan. As for which one between those is best, it honestly depends on the current active VGE and what bonuses they're granting. Zap Brannigan is great as he can sometimes be the exact amount of extra boost that you need to secure one shots with his punch and cheer all skills, plus he has the added support of healing one of your cards for a pretty large amount at higher levels each turn. However, his cheer all can be a double-edged sword if your opponent is running a lot of cards with the hijack skill, and his punches will be wasted if either BGE grants the bodyguard skill or if your opponent is running a lot of bodyguard cards. John Redcorn is a solid choice as he heals all your cards each turn, as well as shields one of them. He also grants motivate to one of your cards, but like with Zap's cheer all, it can be a double-edged sword because of hijack. Similar to Redcorn, Consuela heals all your cards each turn, as well as helps prevent more damage by crippling all of your opponent's cards each turn. She has no risk involved in running her, making her a solid pick for offense. Ricky Spanish is another solid choice as well, similar to Zap. He will heal one of your cards for a good amount at higher levels each turn, as well as protecting one of your cards each turn with his shield skill, as well as two to three of your cards by granting a good chunk of bodyguard to them as well. He's definitely the more conservative approach when it comes to offensive heroes, but he can be effective and has no risk involved. I've used all of these heroes offensively at some point during rumble matches, however my go-to one is Ricky Spanish as he best fits my playstyle. I highly encourage you guys to play with them all and find which ones works best for you. That's everything that goes into putting together a strong Rumble offense deck, now let's take a look at what goes into a good defense deck. Defense wise, just like with the offense deck, try and play to the BGE as best you can when choosing your cards and combos. And if there's two active BGEs, try and play more towards the defensive one. As the goal of a good offense deck is to go for one shots, the goal of a good defense deck is to prevent that from happening. To accomplish this, you're going to want to run your cards with the highest HP. That goes for characters and items, as well as your pre-combos. The bare minimum of a good defense deck when it comes to items and characters to run when it comes to HP is 50 or higher. That also is the baseline for pre-combos. However, with the current meta of the game, ideally shoot for 60 or higher HP for pre-combos if you're able to. I know these numbers may seem insanely high to newer players if you only recently started playing, but don't get discouraged. As a newer player, while you're still building up your card inventory, a lower baseline and more attainable goal to set initially 
Ideally, you're shooting for 40 plus HP on your cards in your defense deck until you're able to transition into the 50 or higher range. Sometimes the HP isn't enough to prevent one shots though, depending on the BGE. So you'll want to look for pre combos and cards with certain skills to give your deck the edge and a fighting chance. The best defensive skills to accomplish that are Bodyguard and Sturdy. Bodyguard will protect your card wall from punches having any effect, and the Sturdy will add some extra longevity to your cards as well. The Leech skill can also add some extra life into your cards, however, they need to survive the first hit in order to benefit from it, so it takes a lower priority to those other two skills. Hijack is also a great defensive skill to run as it will prevent your opponents from being able to run combos and cards with the Craze skill, which will prevent them from overpowering your deck and claiming easy wins. Preventing one-shots is definitely the foundation of a strong defense deck, however the purpose of a defense deck isn't just to stall your opponents, it's to hand them losses, or at the very least shave off points from their scores if they beat you. To that effect, when planning out what combos to include in your defense deck, try and run cards that will have the following skills. First up, Crazed. If you're running powerhouses left and right with this skill, they continue to hit harder and harder each turn, making it less likely that your opponent will be able to heal themselves back up to full. It also really puts the pressure on your opponent to either find a way to take out your Crazer or end the match quickly before it curb stomps them into the ground. Some other great skills to shave off points here and there are the Bomb, Punch, Payback, and Gas skills as they can cause a significant amount of splash damage making it difficult for your opponent to heal all of their cards before the match ends. As for the ideal card spread for a defense deck, it might surprise you. You might think that the best defense deck is a deck full of nothing but pre-combos. While that deck has the potential to be annoying, it's actually far from the best strategy. The only time that strategy actually works efficiently is if your deck consists completely of whatever the newest, most OP on BGE pre-combo is at the moment at combo mastery level 2 or 3. And that will only really work if your opponent doesn't catch on to that immediately and if they're not willing to set aside their pride to just go for the win versus trying to get a perfect score against it. The more realistic strategy that will work the best that follows one simple tenet that remains consistently true across the entire game. And that is that combo is king. The best case scenario is that your defensive card that the AI plays in slot 1 survives the one shot and then immediately gets comboed into an overpowered monster. That being said, the AI in this game is notoriously bad, so you will want to run more pre-combos on this deck than you do on offense to balance the odds more in your deck's favor. Just like with offense, you want to keep your deck as close to the minimum 25 card count as possible to maximize the probability of combos. As for the spread, ideally shoot for anywhere from 7711 to 996. <laughs> I found that anywhere in that range to usually be the sweet spot when it comes to the ratio between your characters, items, and pre-combos. Here's an example of a defense deck that I might run during the Artistic BGE. Once again, I'm running 25 cards total. I'm running a higher count of pre-combos this time, with all of them happening to be on BGE for Artistic. And a common trait they all share is they are health tanks, with most of them having 60 plus HP, and all of them have a combination of defensive skills such as Sturdy, Bodyguard, or Hijack. Though I have more, I was only liking 8 of my pre-combos for defense. Because of that, I'm running an unorthodox spread of 8-9-8. Eight, eight. While it messes with the synergy slightly, I make up for it by ensuring every single card has 100% synergy with each other. And it shows when we look at the statistical analysis of it with Zbot. Item-wise, I'm running all maxed out legendary art cards to match the BGE, with all of them being high 40 HP or higher. I also took special care to ensure they all have defensive skills to extend their longevity and prevent one-shots by ensuring they all have bodyguard. Character-wise, you'll notice I'm running all mythics. That's because they happen to be some of my highest HP characters with the most effective and synergistic combos. And one of them, Haley, is even an artistic card. They all have over 50 HP, with the exception of a few, and they all have skills that are ideal for defense such as Sturdy, Bodyguard, Payback, and the like, helping protect against one-shots to help facilitate combos, which as you can see here, have a vast variety between them. Some are defensive buffers like Brian Statue and Meat Man, with insane amounts of HP, as well as Stallers with Sturdy, Bodyguard, and Hijack, while others are the more offensive buffers like Artist Roger and Propane Sculptor, with gas and bombs that will cause massive draining damage each turn. And then I have Stan, who is kind of like the hybrid of the two with Hijack and Bombs. Plus his cheer can be a game changer on a direct attack. And then I also have my straight up killers to help my deck hand my opponent's losses. Life Drawing Haley, One Art Please, Pointillism, these are all monsters that deal out a massive amount of damage and can win matches in a matter of turns. Now at a glance, the weakest link of this deck appears to be Leela as she has only 44 HP and no discernible main defensive skills. The reason I included her is for her combo alone. It's high risk and high reward. 
as she's only one card out of 25. I feel it's worth the risk because if balloon art gets made, my opponent is taking a loss. Or at the very least, a very ugly win. She's the perfect amount of stall with cripple all in the double digits, and she drains a lot of damage each turn with massive gas amounts. The wide variety of combo types and skills make it difficult to come up with just one counter to my deck, essentially leaving it more or less up to the luck of my opponent if they'll be able to beat it with a good score. As for what heroes are best suited for defense decks, there's quite a few. When it comes to free to play heroes, there are four that can work fantastically out of all of them. Ranked from my top pick to the lowest out of the four is Bobby, Dale, Roger, and Fry. The same skills that made Bobby a great pick for offense also make him great on defense. He's all about adding support and protection to your cards, helping you prevent one-shots. Dale is great as he'll be causing damage to your opponents each turn with the bonus punches, and he can easily mess up perfect scores with his payback from direct attacks on him. Roger is kinda like the hybrid if Bobby and Dale were to have a love child. Wait, that's actually a pretty fucked up analogy. Anyways, you get what I mean. Roger protects your cards with the cripple all support, while also screwing up perfect games with his payback. The reason he's lower on the list is because, while it is unlikely, his cheer skill can be a double-edged sword if your opponent's card has hijacked. And lastly, Fry. He's like a weaker Dale. He has the punch and payback, although they're weaker values because he has a third skill, which is going to be useless to you unless you happen to be running a lot of Futurama cards, as they're the only ones who benefit from his cheer. As for the premium heroes, honestly, with the exception of a couple of them, they almost all work fantastically on defense. The giant chicken gives you payback and punch, and gives you the wild card in the form of giving one of your cards crazed. It can be a double-edged sword like the cheers are for the heroes that we just mentioned. However, unlike the cheer, as the craze value increase your cards receive as a permanent buff, I feel like it's worth the risk. The same reasons that make Ricky Spanish a great offense hero also contribute to defense as that's practically what all of his skills are geared towards. Gene is another fantastic choice as he shields all your cards a little bit, as well as crippling one of your opponents for a lot. He can be a double-edged sword though as his cheer value is equally as high. Linda is one of the newest premium heroes added to the game, and she also happens to be one of the best suited for defense. Every single one of her skills is geared towards it. You have punch to cause damage and shield to prevent it, as well as giving hijack to one of your cards to stave off the crazed. Zap Brannigan can also work well due to his punch and heal skills, but I feel that he's not as effective as the rest and again, double-edged sword. Consuela can be really helpful as well with her cripple all, however again I don't feel she's as impactful defensively as the rest. Personally, Ricky Spanish is always my go-to defensive hero every time. And that's everything that goes into effective rumble decks. Now let's dive into siege deck building. Putting together a great siege deck to defend your island is key if you want to help your guild win. As siege play follows the same format as challenges and secret fight club in that the defender plays first with a sleeper card, the formula is slightly different than rumble. Combos are still king like the rest of the game. That hasn't changed, especially since the AI is known to combo more frequently in Siege. However, you can get away with running more pre-combos successfully in Siege defensively as long as they match the island so that they are granted the buffs. You can even successfully run a complete deck of nothing but pre-combos, granted that they're the right pre-combos and get enough of a buff. This works because of the play order. Since the defender plays first, it's easier to build out a never-ending wall of cards that forces your opponent to keep matching you turn for turn or risk falling behind. And in most cases, when that happens, the defending deck will hand a loss from all the direct damage it will be causing. Similar to Rumble Defense, you're going to want pre-combos that have high HP, that way when they get the island buff added, it will be even higher, making it more likely that the wall will get built. And just like before, you want skills like Sturdy, Bodyguard, and especially Hijack. I say especially Hijack because unlike Rumble, in Siege, when it comes to skills, Crazed is king. So don't hesitate to run pre-combos with Crazed as well. However, unless you can make a whole deck like that, the combos you're going to want to be focusing on are powerhouses. Like I mentioned, aim for the Crazers as those are the ones that will hand losses. Also, go for things that have Motivate and Cheer skills. And secondary to those, Hijack is great as it grants you some protection, as well as the Shield skills. As for the card spread, aim for a spread of ideally 7-7-11 if you have the pre-combos to do it. At the bare minimum, I would not recommend running any higher spreads than 996. 
That goes even for newer players, as Siege grants a bonus to all cards that match the island, it's safe to throw in your blue epic pre-combos if you don't have a bunch of legendary ones to run. It gives you the best chance to build your card wall and get combos made to hand losses. Here's an example of a Siege defense deck that I might run to defend an animal island. As you can see, still sticking to 25 cards, I'm running quite a few pre-combos with 9. However, only 3 of them meet the trait for the island, which isn't ideal. I try to compensate for it by making the remaining 6 my usual high HP tank buffer pre-combos. As for the items, I ensure all of them match the island trait and are the strongest versions of them. As for which items and characters I chose, the only criteria I'm looking for is combo synergy, as well as the strength and skills of the combos. As you can see with these cards, I have 100% combo synergy, and I have not only a couple crazers in there, but also support in the form of cripple and bodyguard to help me stall so that there's time for the killer combos to get made, as well as motivate and cheer to really strike a hard blow on direct attacks. So with this setup, my deck is more likely to get flanked to cause direct damage. As for Siege Offense, the ideal spread to run is 997. No more, no less. Your goal is to get your powerhouse combos made as soon as possible. Having that spread gives you the best chance of successfully doing so. Your 7 pre combos should be high HP ones that work well as buffers and support cards should you need to keep up with your opponent's card wall or stall until you can make a combo. Combo wise, aim for Crazers. Oftentimes, it's the first person to get the craze combo that gets the win. As a heavily offensive approach is the best strategy in Siege, some other skills worth running are Jab and Punch. You can also successfully work with the Bomb, Cripple, Gas, and Payback skills. However, you need to be an expert in the game and be able to effectively predict your opponent's moves as well as master the art of long drawn out battles, so I don't recommend this to newer players. If you want to see these strategies in action, check out my Siege gameplay videos. A playlist link will be down with all of the others. Here's an example of an offense deck that I might run in Siege against a King of the Hill Island. Card count, still at 25 and running that 997 spread. As this is for a King of the Hill Island, you'll notice when it comes to the character, I ensure every single one of them is a King of the Hill card. As opposed to the items, it doesn't matter what show they come from, as once you make your combo, it will be a King of the Hill combo. For the items, I simply chose the ones with 100% combo synergy that gave me my strongest, hardest hitting combos. As you can see, almost every single one of them has Crazed and Leech, which will help them stay alive while they become complete monsters and get me my win. They also have skills like Gas and Punch to chip away at pesky buffers my opponents might have on defense. Also, every single one of them, with the exception of one, has combo mastery, with my Devil Hank being maxed out mastery. As for the pre-combos, you'll notice I only included one King of the Hill one, despite me having others. The reason for this is because when it comes to Siege offense, it's all about supporting your combos to keep them alive. So I prioritized high HP pre-combos with Bodyguard and Sturdy to keep my opponent's defense decks from breaking through my own card wall. My high school build just happened to fit that criteria as well as matching the island, so I included it. With a deck like this, if I can get one of my craze combos set up slot 1 on my first turn, which according to Zebot is pretty damn likely, and then just keep pace with the opponent's defense deck by spamming my pre-combos and making other killer combos, 9 times out of 10 I would win that match. As for heroes, defensively, you're going to want to run whoever you have leveled the highest. If you have all or most at high to max level, then you have some options for show islands. Many of the heroes grant particular buffs like cheer, shield, and the like to their particular shows. If you have those heroes high enough level and are guarding a show island, consider running them as your defenders. As for offense, just pick whoever you can easily get the win with. It should be your highest level hero. If you have them at level 10 or higher, some of my favorites are Zap Brannigan and Ricky Spanish. That's it for Siege decks, though I do have a few quick notes to make for a couple of other game modes when it comes to deck tweaks. For arena gameplay, follow the same format for Siege offense when it comes to your deck and just build it around whatever the current BGE is. If you're unable to build for the current BGE, just make it for your best hardest hitting combos while protecting your combo synergy. For the Clash game mode, follow the same format as Arena for deck guidelines, however, you want to focus in on trying to make a deck that exclusively is based around the combos that get buffed for the Clash. Because of this, your epic items and epic pre-combos can be beneficial. As your opponent gets to hit you first in this game mode, you're going to want to make sure your non-clash pre-combos and cards are really high HP, as well as your items and characters, if possible, to avoid them getting killed in one hit. For challenge gameplay, specifically the non-refillable challenge, follow a similar format to rumble offense for deck building, but run a 996 spread. <laughs> if possible to maximize your scores. As for deck advice for the Swole Club challenge, 
I already have a couple videos covering everything you could possibly want to know about that challenge when it comes to deck building and strategy, so check those videos out. For those who don't know what Swole is, it's a massive month-long event that usually runs a couple times a year with its own set of rules and bonuses. Seriously, if you want to know more about the beast that is Swole Club, well, you know where to find the links by now. And that's going to do it for my deck building guide, but don't click away yet though because like I said at the beginning of the video, I have a special surprise for you guys. For those of you who don't know who I am here for the win is, he's a friend of mine that I originally got into Animation Throwdown, who's become pretty well known in the community and is one of the top strategists in a lot of the Walkers guilds. He even helped found one of the guilds, Walkers of Mayhem. As a goof, I used to kick him from the Walkers guild chat rooms all the time, and eventually the rest of the guild members got in on it, and soon everyone was kicking him every day. So as a final send-off, I can't think of a better way to end my last Animation Throwdown video than by kicking I Am Here For The Win one last time, and from none other than the very guild he helped create. Sorry bro, you know I love you. Anyways, thanks for all of the love and support these last couple years guys, it's been a blast. As a lot of you have been requesting it, I went ahead and made a Discord server for all of my fans. There are several channels to discuss my content, as well as other fun stuff like anime and gaming in general. I even dedicated an entire section to Animation Throwdown. So even though I will no longer be making content for this game, you guys will still have a community that I'll be a part of to discuss the game. Don't think of this as the end, but as a new beginning. I'll still be making videos just for other games. For a full roadmap of what you can expect going forward, be sure to check out my update video that I posted a few weeks back. Link will be in the video description. Anyways, thanks so much for watching guys. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. This is Magician Jasa, signing off for the last time from Animation Throwdown, The Quest for Cards. Peace.